Update. Dad left us and a decade later wants to reconcile because he has cancer. Am I wrong to be angry? Original post. My dad left us and started a new family when I was 14. This had a profound impact on myself and my family. Life as a child of a single parent was hard as you can imagine. The government benefits was hardly enough to support three kids and we lived below the poverty line. Then my mom became an alcoholic. I started working as soon as I legally could to help with the finances. I sacrificed my childhood so that there was electricity and gas in the house. I started failing at school and paid out of my own pocket to hire a tutor. I went to university locally even though I had better offers elsewhere. I have a good and stable career now. My family lives with me but I feel they are not respecting me. Recently my dad got in touch with my younger sister through Facebook. She met up with him and brought him back to my home. He didn't apologize for the pain he put me through. He made it all about himself and tried to gain sympathy for his plight. Am I wrong for not caring and not wanting him in my life? I told him to leave. My mother and sisters tried to defend him, we got into an argument and I threatened to evict my own family. We have not talked for days and my home has become hostile. What should I do? Now for the top advice before reading the update. Idiots are idiots. Idiots with cancer are still idiots. Idiots who die are still idiots. There's a tendency when people pass away or become sick for others to feel like they should overlook bad behavior or reconcile just because the person is going through a hard time or we might not get another chance. No, if he wanted to reconcile, he should have done it before he needed something. He has cancer and as with any serious medical condition, there's a huge strain on both financial and emotional fronts. He only came back because he wants your help, probably with both of the above. He's not interested in reconciling for your sake, or even because he wants to make amends, because if that were the case, then he wouldn't have only been focusing on himself. He's back in your life because he wants something from you. Your mom and sisters, and probably you as well, have been wishing your dad was a different person for the last 10 years. Now he's showing up and acting like that's the case, like he wants to be part of their lives again, and like many people offered the thing they dream and wish for, your mom and sis are willing to suspend their doubts and go along with it. The reason they are so mad at you is because you are bursting the bubble of their dream with your refusal to ignore the reality of what your father has done. You can't force them not to have a relationship with him, but you can and should set boundaries for the house that you own or pay for. If you don't want him there, then they just have to visit with him elsewhere. You will respect their desire to see him, but they should also respect your desire not to see him. That is a perfectly reasonable compromise under the circumstances. This. I was no contact with my mother when she died, or very little contact, only when there was absolutely no one else that could help her. I don't regret it. I regret that she was horrible to me and made it impossible to have a relationship with her. And now that she's gone, I still remember all the trauma and all the crappy things she said to me right up until shortly before she died. A person isn't obligated to be part of a neglectful parent's life. And while some may feel guilty about it, the guilt I felt was minimal and it passed quickly. My mother disowned me because I divorced my wife. She expected me to live in misery with a woman who was ruining us financially and completely useless as a parent. I raised my kids mostly by myself and both my kids are grateful that I stayed in their lives and had them live with me instead of their mother. My mother was mentally ill, but she was also mean-spirited, petty and impossible to be around, especially in public because zero filter. I've thought about her off and on since she died in 1993. But every time I do, it just reaffirms my disdain for her. I even feel guilty about it, until I remember she cut me off like I never existed. Even my kids hated her for it, and she couldn't understand why they wanted nothing to do with her either. I totally agree with the top comment, people always try to make idiots who've passed away into people they never were. An idiot is still an idiot, even when they're dead. You're completely justified in asking him to leave and in being angry. They can have a relationship with him if they want, but they shouldn't bring him to your home without your permission. This was my first thought. OP had to step up and be the man of the house, and his sisters thought it would be okay to bring their dad to the house her brother had to provide for them in. OP you have every right to be infuriated, especially because he didn't even apologize. He is not sorry, he is guilty. No, you're perfectly justified in your response. Explain as clearly as you can your feelings to your family. If they want to see him, then that's not something you should evict them over as they'll have their own feelings and opinions towards him and whether they want to reconcile. But if you don't want to see him or have anything to do with him, then that obviously can't take place at your house. Where you said that you don't feel your family are respecting you, is that solely to do with this situation or is there more to it? The fact that he can just walk back into our lives without an explanation. My family is financially dependent on me. 
I feel like what I have done and what I went through is just being tossed aside. I don't want him in our lives. There are things that irritate me now, such as eating dinner alone. I feel like I am being ghosted. And now for the update. You guys are right. I can't force my family to accept my views of no contact with my father. I resent this man so much. I can't stand the sight of him. After I posted yesterday, I was invited to have dinner with my family. To no one's surprise, my dad and his new family were there. I picked out the two most expensive dishes on the menu, and we had a chat. I heard his thoughts on the matter of being an absent father, but I didn't bring up any of our hardships. My mother and sisters made more attempts to make me forgive him. I did. I forgave him, but that doesn't mean I need to have a relationship with him anymore. Again, my family protested that I'm being cruel and heartless. I'm not. Many people survive cancer, and his lung cancer is in the early stages. I told them I would not be present at any family events if he was there. My sister shouted at me claiming he is our dad, you idiot. Yes he is, to which I replied that he needs to take over his responsibilities, as a father. I told them I had cancelled the tenancy on the house, and we need to move out by end of this month. My sisters need to return the iPhones that are on contract, as I am cancelling those. Driving lessons will be cancelled, gym membership will be cancelled, subscription services will be cancelled, and everything else that I pay for. These are dad's responsibilities now. Ate my dinner and left them the with Bill as a little act of petty revenge. I have been staying with my girlfriend and have not answered any texts and calls from them. I need a break. I'm done. I'm done taking over dad's role. I'm done with the financial responsibilities or acting as the parent. I'm 25 and I need to live my own life now. I don't think this will burn bridges. It's just a wake-up call for them. Edit. I'm not going to ghost or abandon them, but they need to become independent now. I'm reading all the comments. I know I have acted like a jerk. I just need some time to collect my thoughts. I might update later. I read your original post and your update, and I have to say that I'm freaking proud of you, dude. Stick to your guns. If you can take anything positive out of this entire ordeal is that it's made you very responsible. This exactly. Because my friend's ex-husband abandoned her with three very young kids. She never got a penny, not one dime, zero help. She eventually built up a daycare business, and those kids never wanted for anything. All the extracurricular activities and even travel you could imagine. She has no retirement because everything she made, she spent on those kids. Fast forward 25 years. Dad drops into the picture because he hears of the wedding of the eldest daughter, and now as adults they rally around him. He's a hero and has a big cozy relationship with all the grown kids. And worst part of all, he's turned them all against her. I understand the longing for a father back in their life, but they never put up a fight and turned on the only person that cared about them when they were most vulnerable. OP, you are a good man. Stick to your guns. The fact that you stepped up gives you a unique view of what he truly did by abandoning his kids. Screw that guy, he started a new family and left you guys when you were vulnerable. He's got a lot more groveling to do and your siblings should be holding him to that. Oh my god, your poor friend. Did they ever figure out their dad was an ass? No. And it's devastating. What's worse is, even at the wedding, the absent dad had kissed the groom's parents but so much, offering to help with the wedding etc. that he got a huge public acknowledgement or speech by the groom's father about what a great father he was and what a great job he did with his daughter. My friend didn't have a single thing said about her. And she actually helped. I've known her for 20 years and I've watched her raise her kids firsthand. She hasn't invited any of this, only suffered for her kids, and this is what she gets. I'm sick just typing this, and that's just the tip of the iceberg. Makes you take pause about how much sacrifice is too much, when you only get nothing at the end. I have so much respect for you. I can understand all too well the pain of having a parent abandon you. And I can't imagine the added pain of your mother turning to alcohol, only adding to the financial burden. It's harsh, but you have worked hard to support your mother and sibling when it is not your responsibility. If he wants the title and respect back then, he can step up to the plate and fill the father role completely. Screw him, it sounds like he only came back because he was diagnosed with cancer. It should have never been my responsibility. I didn't work out of love for my family or some sort of charity. It was out of desperation. We were so close to being put into the foster care system. Our lives would have turned out much worse. Next story. I just caught my dad cheating and the women he is cheating with is pregnant. Plus update. So a female 16 decided to go to a local coffee shop and get a drink when I spotted my dad with this woman. Not a big of a deal. They could have been co-workers or something. Then he started brushing her hair out of her face while he was talking and he had a big smile on his. 
Definitely something you don't normally do with just a friend or co-worker. So I started recording. Then they kissed, which where I'm from, you definitely don't do that with a friend. I also noticed this woman is in her mid to late 20s while my dad is 41. I also noticed this woman is very much pregnant, probably around 8-ish months. After I got my drink, I decided to confront my dad and walk up to them. I just said, hey dad, what are you doing? He looked shocked, but then said, oh, just getting coffee with a friend. I decided to be brave and said, so you kiss all your friends like that. I saw panic in his eyes and he quickly said, don't tell your mom. I then asked if the baby was his. He said a quick yes while not even looking at me. I just said, well you've had at least around 9 months to tell mom about your affair, yet you haven't. I'm really disappointed in you. Then I left. My dad has a job in business, so we always thought he was busy at work, but I now see where he spent some of his time. I was going to text my mom right away, but she's at work right now, and she's a nurse so I don't want to distract her from an important job. I'll tell her when I get home from school. I feel really bad for my mom. She told me this morning my dad had an early morning meeting. I could see sadness in her eyes. I asked what's wrong, and she admitted to wishing he was home more to be with us. So yeah, I can't believe my dad did this. My mom definitely deserves better though. Now for the top advice before the little update. This is likely to get very messy. The most important thing to remember is that you hold no blame in this situation. No matter what your dad may say. Of course you have to tell your mom. Tell her and then take a step back. You are a child and neither parent should use you as a sounding board. Your mom will likely be heartbroken when she finds out. It's hard to prepare yourself for that. Give her lots of cuddles and reassure her you love her, but encourage her to talk to a friend or sibling about it all. Thank you. I have a feeling my dad is going to be mad at me for telling her, but clearly he's not, so I have to tell her. That's laughable that he would be mad at you for him being caught with his affair partner. The audacity of him begging you not to tell your mom. Iki. Well, good for you for confronting him like that. This is a bad situation for you and your mom of course, but because you handled it right there in the moment, he won't be able to lie and prolong the pain. I was debating in my head if I should confront him or not, but I'm glad I ended up doing it. Info, how did his side chick act? I'm assuming she knows he's married and doesn't care. I'm sorry you are going through this and that your dad is a horrible lying cheat. I'm pretty sure she knows as he had his wedding ring on. She didn't really say anything, just kinda stared at me. Please tell your mom. I am planning on telling her. I just can't right now because it's not right for me to do it over text. When I was a teen, I was in a situation much like this with my family. It may not come as much of a shock to your mom as you think. Just be aware of that. Now for the mini update. So I told my mom. She was upset and cried for a while and wanted to be left alone. Then my dad came home with flowers to try and suck up. Long story short, they yelled and argued a lot and now my mom and I are packed up going to my grandma's. Last story. My dad is trying to bribe me, so I won't tell my mom he is cheating. And it worked. For as long as I can remember, I've been a daddy's girl. But after growing up, I see that he isn't who I thought he was when I was four. My parents honestly don't need to be together. My dad screams at my mom because she asks him to get a job. He had one, but where he's at isn't working right now. And mom is breaking her back trying to provide for both me and my sister. My dad doesn't like that we try and stick up for our mom. But when you have a dad who chases you around town, threatens his kids, and curses you out because you love your grandma more than him, you as the child can only take so much. It's grown folks business. That's fine, I don't care. Now here we are today. I'll admit I may be in the wrong, but when it comes to my mom, I don't play about her. I was with my dad yesterday, grocery shopping, when we met one of his old hookups. He cheated on my mom with her some years ago. They hugged, and she tried to hug me, but I said no way in hell, and walked off. I got into a lot of trouble for it. So we're in the truck, and he calls her and tells her, look baby, she didn't mean it. I say they and he just rolls his eyes and says, she is going to apologize. I just look at him and say you're married. Call my mom baby. He then looked as if he had just got caught. This man was stupid. He called her baby, in front of me. I told him he's an idiot. He hung up the phone and was literally crying, begging. I said no, and that I'd be telling mom as soon as we got to the house. He wouldn't start the car. He begged and begged me. So, I used him to my advantage. He went into the Apple store and he left his phone. I've seen him put in the code, so I knew what it was. I found him texting and sexting multiple women. I took pictures on my phone and sent them to my sister. I guess he noticed he left it because he came running back to the car for it. 
I have a brand new phone, an iPad, and he gave me a $500 Shane card. I also got my sister an iPad and a new pair of Jordans. I still don't know where he got the money from since he doesn't have a job. But we got home, we ate dinner, and I snitched on him while eating my McDonald's, which he also bought. I told my sister to show our mom the proof, and she went ballistic. He's currently kicked out, and my mom is looking for a divorce lawyer. All of my dad's side of the family is currently blaming me, but I don't care. He's a cheater and my mom is a great woman who deserves the best. Screw you, dad. Is it possible your mom's money paid for all that stuff? Your mother is better off without him. My first thought, make sure he didn't rob your mom to buy these things. I'm sure it's nice to have, but it won't be nice living on the sidewalk because he spent your mom's mortgage on Jordans. I've seen this comment plenty. We checked through the bank statements and no money was from my mom. He apparently was saving up for a new house for us. And that's where it came from. Saving up for an apartment to meet his side chick is more like it.